How's it going guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. When you look back at the Atrix 4G on AT&T, which launched in February, we can say a couple of good things about it. It had a dual core processor. Actually, it was the first to have a dual core processor, that NVIDIA Tegra 2 chip inside of it, but it also had a great accessory ecosystem. You look at the lap docks, you look at some of the HD media docks, some of the stuff that you could buy separately and it was a great all-around device. Well, Motorola's added again with the Atrix 2, which is available now on AT&T. Now, design-wise, this one's changed a little bit. It has the you know, same dual-core 1 gigahertz processor, even though this time around, it's a TI OMAP processor. It does increase the display to 4.3 inches, and it's a QHD display with no pin tile technology. So you're not dealing with the pixelation. It's a little bit less bright, but not dealing with the pixelation. Eight megapixel camera on the back in place of a five megapixel camera, and it shoots 1080p HD video as well. Good looking design, 1,735 milliamp hour battery, and best of all, it's available from AT&T for $99.99 and even 50 bucks in some retailers. That's a pretty good price for a high-end device. Is this the one you should get or should you go with maybe the iPhone 4S or the Galaxy S2 on AT&T? We'll find out in the full review, but first, special thanks to our boys at Best Buy for hooking us up with phones like this and phones like the iPhone 4S for use in our One Paw Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, all that stuff. So when you walk out the door, your internet, your email, your phone call, your voicemail, everything's set up and ready to go at Best Buy Mobile. Let's get into the full review now. Motorola Atrix 2, is this a device to get? Should you spend $100 on it, or should you go with something else? Let's find out in the full review, which starts right now. So you know what, honestly, the Atrix 4G, when it first came out, if you remember my review, I didn't really care for Motorola Blur, and still don't in that current form. Now, Motorola has really retweaked their UI and made it really usable, and when they released the Gingerbread update for the Atrix 4G, it made it a, made a world of difference, really turned it into a device that I could recommend to people. Well, the Atrix 2 is out now, and it ships with that new build of Motorola's user interface, and it packs some nice improvements under the hood. It's really an evolutionary upgrade from the Atrix 4G. It packs a one gigahertz dual core processor. This time around though, it has a TI OMAP processor in place of that NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor that was on the Atrix 4G. It has a little bit of a bigger display as well, 4.3 inches, and it's a QHD display. Now the benefit here is it doesn't have pen tile this time around, so you can really see, and uh, hold it up really close so you can see. If you remember pen tile or you're familiar with it at all, you know it's pretty pixelated. It's a little bit brighter, but very pixelated. Little to no pixelation on the Atrix 2 and then it has an eight megapixel camera, 1080p HD video recording capabilities, and you can see this kind of new design as well. I think it looks better, it gives it more of kind of a, a corporate look, or a little bit, you know, instead of having that kind of glossy back, it has a nice texturized battery cover, and then just looks a little bit more professional, a little bit, you know, one of those devices where I can honestly say, you know, whether you're 12 and you're carrying it to school, or you're 45 and you're using it in the boardroom, it's gonna be great for a lot of different demographics. It has a front-facing camera as well, Android 2.3 with, like I said uh, earlier, Motorola's custom, user interface, and then it has a 1,735 milliamp hour battery. Now the real benefit of this device, in my opinion, has nothing to do with the specs. It has everything to do with the price. This is a high-end device with a great dual-core processor, a lot of great specs, and it's available at AT&T for 100 bucks. This is a steal, people. I mean, $100 for this device, and even cheaper at Best Buy, I'm hearing reports of $49.99. That's pretty impressive for a device uh, that comes with a great media ecosystem, a great accessory ecosystem, like you know the lap docks and uh, some of the HD docks. So on all, you know, the price is really what appeals to me on this device. But you can see on the left side, micro USB charging port, HDMI port, then you have your uh, volume rocker over here, camera shortcut button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then power button. Gone is the uh, the biometric fingerprint reader. But, uh, you know, again, 100 bucks, can't beat that. That's really a great price for a high-end device. Now, that said, this is a pretty interesting time in the Android world because so much is coming out so fast that, yeah, while it's $100, you know, the Droid Razor is right around the corner, the Galaxy Nexus is right around the corner, and several others that I'm sure are going to be announced between now and the Consumer Electronics Show in January. But, you know, no real changes to the way the user interface looks. If you're familiar with the update that came to the Gal or to the uh, Motorola Atrix 4G, you can see it comes with the typical AT&T applications like Code Scanner, Family Map, AT&T Navigator, and then you can see that some of the icons are kind of customized to AT&T, like the little browser icon here has the globe in it, for example. And uh, some differences there, like contacts, camera, camcorder, those are all Motorola-centric uh, little widget or little uh, icons there. And then you can see featured apps, and to scroll over, Let's Golf 2, Live TV, Mobile Hotspot, My AT&T, you got Quick Light on this sucker, you have uh, Quick Office, you have Social Location, which is pretty cool, I'll talk about that later in the video, and then you have a web top connector for when you get that laptop, you pop it down in there, and uh, let me wait for that to come back so we can 
pick up where we left off YP Mobile and then Zumocast all pre-installed. And then of course, in this nice convenient uh, new menu with the ability to uh, customize by group, I can see my downloaded applications. I can see AT&T specific applications. And best of all, if you're an Android fiend and you, know, you were mad at AT&T before because you couldn't uninstall the AT&T applications, well, you can do that now, my friends. You can go in here and uh, thanks to Motorola's UI, you can actually directly click on the app itself and then go down here and say uninstall. And it'll take you directly to the uninstall page. So most of this AT&T stuff, as you can see, can be uninstalled if you don't want it. And honestly, I mean, AT&T Navigator, I'm sure it's great, but why would you spend $10 a month when you have Google Maps pre-installed on the device? But uh, you've got your five home screens here. So a little bit of a difference from the typical seven home screens that come on TouchWiz and come on Sense UI. So, you know, it's nice to have. You know, for me, I think seven's a little bit too much. So to have five, I think, is a happy medium. And you can see it's a typical Motorola UI and then the notifications bar. No real changes here. Now, if I had a message or an email, I do like the ability to uh, individually remove notifications as opposed to kind of having the clear all option or having no option. It's nice to be able to do that and clear out, you know, say, hey, I already read this email, but I still need to be notified of this missed call, so I'm going to leave it there. It's nice to have that option. Then you can see up here, and I'll bring it in, uh, focus it in so you can take a look. The uh, H Plus icon has been replaced by a nifty little 4G logo, which is uh, kind of indicative of that logo that AT&T has on their website. Now, you know, it'd be interesting to see with this being an HSPA device, which it supports HSPA Plus up to 21 megabits per second. Now, you're never going to see 21 megabits per second. Uh, that's a theoretical peak, but it supports it, which is nice. But, you know, they're building this as a 4G device, and then you have 4G LTE coming out. So it'd be interesting to see how they distinguish the two as, uh, as time goes on. You have some HSPA Plus devices and some LTE devices. You know, they're both it's clearly two different classes of 4G. So it'll be interesting to see how they, how they distinguish it. Down here, you got your capacitive buttons, menu, home, back, and search. And uh, other than that, that's about it on the, on the build quality front. Let's take a look at messaging here. I'm going to load this up. Oops. Hang on. Load this up here. I'm going to get this text message out that I was testing to myself earlier. And you can see here's what text messaging looks like. No real changes here. But we'll bring it up here. And you can see enter a message. And you have Motorola's custom uh, keyboard. You have multi-touch keyboard. And then you have swipe as well. And I've talked about it before. Motorola's multi-touch keyboard is my favorite Android keyboard. I think it's the easiest to type on. So we're going to say the quick brown fox. The quick brown four. Quick brown fox is happy that he is in London because I'm shooting this uh, in my office on Friday afternoon, but this isn't going to go up until Monday. So actually, when you see this on the site and you're looking at it, there's a strong chance I'll be on a plane on the way to London for Nokia World. So Quick Brown Fox is pretty excited because he's going to travel along with me. I bought him a ticket, put him in first class because I'm selfless like that. You know, I'm going to sit back and coach. He's going to sit in first class. So he'll get all the, uh, all the champagne and peanuts that he can eat. So you can see the keyboard and landscape as well. And you know, it's funny, four, four inches to 4.3 inches, not a huge difference, but... I will say for somebody that's new to an on-screen keyboard, they're used to using maybe a BlackBerry or a physical QWERTY, it's nice to have the added screen real estate. And I can't get over and can't tell you and can't show you on camera enough the difference between having no pen tile display technology and having pen tile display technology. It's a huge difference and it really makes it look better. No pixelation, you can see here in the notifications, that blue is a true blue. It looks great, I'm gonna wait for it to focus in so you can take a look at it yourself. Or at least try to let it focus in. Focus. There we go. You can see here, you know, little to no pixelation there. So really impressed across the board with the display. To me, the biggest improvement on this device is actually the display and uh, the HSPA Plus capability. So you got that. Let's take a look at browser. And uh, we are kicked onto Wi-Fi. I'm actually going to kick it off of Wi-Fi because we're going to do network tests later in the video. And we can't do network tests on Wi-Fi because that wouldn't be truthful. So we're going to go in here and uh, wait for 4G to kick back on. There we go. Phone dog. And oh, what do you know? I've already searched for it before. And then we'll wait for it to load up. Now, HSPA Plus is pretty fast on AT&T. You know, there's 21 megabits per second theoretical peak, even though, like I said, you're not going to see that. I've consistently seen speeds between 2 and 6 megabits per second, depending on where I'm at in the city. So right now I'm in my office uh, uptown, pretty decent signal. And it looks like 4G is uh, beaming through pretty quickly. So we'll wait for the page to fully load because I don't want to give you an inaccurate uh, viewpoint here. But what I will say is you, can, you have your ability to open up separate windows. You don't get the preview like you do on TouchWiz, like you do on Sense. It just shows the text here, the header of the site, and then the actual text itself. So I open a separate window. You know, it goes to Yahoo, for example. It's going to show Yahoo, and I can flip right back to Phone Dogs. Kind of miss having that physical uh, preview, if you will, but still, it's not a make or break kind of thing. So pinch to zoom is relatively fast to me. I mean, there's a little bit of lag, and you can see that the uh, flash advertisements look kind of funky. But again, that's relatively fast for me. 
And uh, you know, again, you have to keep in mind, you know, $100, that's relatively fast to me. The Galaxy S2 might be a little bit faster, but it's for $200 as opposed to $100. So a nice uh, speed versus price, I think it's, uh, it falls right there in that happy medium area. So pretty impressed with that. And you can see this is something that's a Motorola UI specific thing. You can see the transition effects. Now compare this to something, and this isn't a dogfight by any means, but compare this to something like the, uh, the Galaxy S2 where I'm in, you know, phone dogs page. See how blocky those transitions are, how they kind of just bam, bam, they kind of block back and forth. I think it's kind of ugly. And then you look at this, and you see the transitions are a little bit smoother. And even though it's just as slow, or maybe a little bit slower than the Galaxy S2, the transition effect kind of fools your eye and makes it seem faster than it actually is. So that's a big improvement as well on the browser front. So good job to Motorola. That's something, again, that's in Motorola's UI that's not in Android 2.3. So something to uh, keep in mind. One other thing I want to show you is the, uh, the market as well. There's been an improvement here, and if you're coming to Android for the first time, or maybe you used Android a year ago, and you're coming back from another platform, the market has been greatly improved. And you can see the look it has here with these kind of combination of rectangles and squares. Kind of looks like Metro UI on um, Windows Phone, on the Windows Phone platform. You can see here apps, games, books, and movies are all organized into one easy to use market. So you want to download a book, go right into books, and you can see the uh, little shopping bag up there corresponds to the color. So for movies, that shopping bag is going to turn red. And then for apps and games, you've got your little green shopping bag. We'll load up apps now so you can take a look at those. And you've got your featured apps, and it can come over here in this kind of grid format and take a look at top paid, top free, top grossing ads, top new paid, top new free, etc. And uh, we'll go back to free just so you can see there. And then you've got all your different apps. Now we can go into Angry Birds, for example. And I have not, I'm sad to say I've not gotten into the Angry Birds kick. I've been told several times I need to try it. So I uh, might be one of like the six people in the world that uh, review phones that actually uh, don't, I don't have a great deal of experience in Angry Birds. But oh well, you know, you've got this here and you can see the screenshots. Scroll right between those to see the screenshots. I've got my description, what's new, some videos so I can preview the app itself, reviews. I've got more games by Rovio. And I have the developer and what else users viewed and then market content. Now I go to install. It's going to bring up my address, and it's going to give me these permissions like it did in the old market. And all I have to do is hit accept and download, and I'm good to go. And then I would have Angry Birds on my device. So it's uh, quick and easy to use the market. It's nice to have everything in one place, books, movies, and apps.